My name is Jamin and I'm an Oxford University Maths graduate. I'm really excited for today's solution video. This problem I have actually stolen from an Oxford University Maths lecture, but it's also in TVO's problem solving booklet, which is designed for students who are looking to prepare for the Oxford and uh, Cambridge Maths interviews. Um, so this problem, as I say, is a probability problem, which I've taken from my maths lecture. Now, I would normally read out the problem here, but I'm actually going to insert a clip of Professor Ma uh, Matthias Winkle, who was uh, who currently is still a probability professor at the University of Oxford. He's going to explain this problem. Imagine you have a spaghetti bowl and lots of strands of spaghetti with two ends each, and you want to tie them together at their ends. Right? The way you do that is you pick two ends out of your bowl. Suppose the bowl has n strands. Pick two ends and tie them together. There's two possibilities. Either they are the ends of the same strand, in which case you form a loop, or they are the ends of different strands, in which case you just get a longer strand of, of spaghetti. Okay? Now what's the question here? I'm asking, on average, how many loops are you going to form if you keep doing this until you have no more ends in the bowl. Okay, cool. So we have n strands of spaghetti like this. And just to kind of reiterate, we're going to pick out two different ends at the same time. They could be from the same strand of spaghetti or they could be from different ones. And what we want to determine is the probability or the expected number of loops that we form. So we pick two ends connect them together. If they're from the same end, same piece of spaghetti, that's just going to form one loop. Uh, if they're from different ends, then it's just going to perform kind of one long piece of spaghetti like that. And the question is, at the end, once there are no ends left, we'll have a bunch of loops. What's the expected number that we, what was the number we expect to have? Okay, and we're given a little clue here to find a formula linking En and En minus 1. So here En is going to mean the number of expected loops if you start with N strands of spaghetti. So what we're going to be using here is the law of conditional expectation, uh, which is a very long phrase. I'm going to say the law of conditional expectation to uh, This says that the expected value of some event x happening is equal to the expected value of x given y times the probability of y plus the expected value of x given not y times the probability of y. In fact, you can generalize this or given so probability of not y, I should say. You can, in fact, generalize this, but we don't need any uh, further generalizations in order to uh, solve this problem. Um, so this is a really cool fact to know. How do we use this here to help us work out the expected number of strands of spaghetti? Well, what we're going to do is start by picking one end. So each time we're picking two ends, and they're two different ends, but we can think of this as first picking one and then picking another. And it doesn't really matter. Okay, so En here is going to be, uh, we're going to let x in this formula equal um, the number of loops, number of loops starting with n strings of spaghetti. I'll just put n strings here. And y here is going to be um, the two ends that we pick are from the same string. So two ends are from same string. And so now we're just going to kind of just plug this into this formula here. What's the expected value of x? Well, that's the expected number of loops starting with n strings. Well, that's precisely en. Cool. Now we need to think about this. So the expected value of x given y times the probability of y. Let's first think about the probability of y. What is the probability that the two ends are from the same string? We put our hands into this big bag of spaghetti strings. We put our first our left hand on one end and our right hand on a different end. Without loss of generality, we can assume that our left hand, the first like end that we touch, is on this string. They're all identical, essentially. There's no uh, one, neither string of spaghetti is more preferable than the other. We put our hand in and we put our hand and we pick up this end of the spaghetti. How many ends are left over? Well, there's n minus one strings here each of which have two ends. So that's two times n minus, uh, two n minus two, sorry. And then we've also got one more here, so two n minus one. So the probability that we end up picking the end from the same piece of string is one over two n minus one. So this term here is this probability of y term here. Okay, 
Now what we need to do is work out, well, the expected number, uh, expected value of x given y. So that's the, what is the expected total number of loops given that the first two ends are from the same piece of string. So let's imagine we do have this, uh, in, in which case, so if I've drawn five strings here, if I pick, put those two together, I'll get one loop, and then I'll have four strings of spaghetti left. What's the expected value here? Well, I've already got one loop guaranteed, and I can't pick any more ends from there, but because there are no ends. And so any remaining ends have to come from these four loops. How many do I expect to get from here? Well, it's precisely en minus one. And so I can add these two together, and that's going to be my expected value of the number of loops that I get in total, given that these first two come from the same string. So I can just put this all into my formula over here. So let me just get rid of that, give myself some space. So we get that like so. Cool. So that's the first term of our expression. The next term in our expression, well, we've got the expected value of x, given that the two pieces of string are not um uh, from the, the two ends are not from the same piece of string times the probability of that occurring. Well, let's deal with this first. What's the probability that the two ends are not from the same piece of string? Well, if the probability that they are is one over two n minus one, the probability that they aren't is going to be two n minus two over two n minus one, so that these guys add up to one. Okay, now what's the probability or the sorry, the expected uh, number of loops if um, we don't choose two? Uh, two ends from the same string of spaghetti. Well, let's just draw up the five that we had to begin with. One, two, three, four, five. Let's say I choose that end, and it doesn't really matter, that end there. Well, what do I do? When I connect them, I've just essentially made one long bit of spaghetti. And how many am I left with? Well, I'm left with essentially four bits of spaghetti. And so therefore, the number of loops I expect to make is en minus one, like so. And so I get this very nice recurrence relation that en is equal to 1 plus en minus 1 times uh, 1 over 2n minus 1 plus en minus 1 times 2n minus 2 over 2n minus 1. And now if you simplify this, you get en equals en minus 1 plus 1 over 2n minus 1. Okay, cool. So we've got this really interesting recurrence relation here. Now what we're going to do is try and solve this recurrence relation. So try and work out what en is. Cool, so we have this recurrence relation here. How do we solve it? Now, if you've studied recurrence relations like this, you may know of some techniques, but this is a really, really nice one, which I think everyone should know. What I'm gonna do is subtract en minus one from both sides. So I get en minus en minus one equals one over two n minus two n minus one, like so. Okay, cool. Now remember, this is true for all integers, n, or at least all like, uh, integers n, which are at least two, in order for this to make sense. Um, so in particular, I can replace n with n minus one, and this formula will still be true. So if I replace n with n minus one, I get e n minus one minus e n minus two equals one over two lots of n minus one minus one, but that's just going to be two n minus three, like so. And again, I can replace n in the same way that I just replace n with n minus one, I can replace n with n minus two. And if I do that, I get e n minus two minus e n minus three equals one over two n minus five. And I can keep doing this like so, replacing n with kind of the next number down until I get to like e two minus e one equals, and then this will be one over, oh gosh, what will this be on the bottom? So it's going to be uh, two times the first number minus one. So here, n, if we double it and then subtract one, we get that. If we double n minus one and subtract one, we get two n minus three. If we double n minus two and subtract one, we get two n minus five. So this is going to be double two minus one, which is a third, like so. Okay, great. What's the point there? Well, the really interesting thing that happens is this left-hand side now becomes a huge telescopic sum. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. What I'm going to do is add up all the left-hand side together. Um, ignore, ignore this. Oh, sorry, up to here. Sorry, so ignore that. Um, why do I want to add all the left-hand sides together here? Well, I notice if I do, this minus en minus 1 is going to cancel with this positive en minus 1. This minus en minus 2 is going to cancel with that en minus 2. 
this minus e and minus three is going to cancel with this and so on. There'll be an e2 here to cancel with that. And so if I add the whole left hand side together, I just get en minus e1. And that's obviously got to equal oopsie, the sum of the right hand side. So that's one over two n minus one plus one over two n minus three and so on up to one third. So kind of the sum of the reciprocals of the odd numbers. Um, now, what is E1? Well, E1 is the expected number of loops you make if you start with just one string of spaghetti. Well, hopefully it's pretty clear. This will only take one move. You'll connect those two ends and make one loop. So E1 is just one. So we get the En, if I bring that to the other side, is one over two n minus one plus one over two n minus three and so on up to a third plus one, which is the same as one over one. So we get that En is the sum of the reciprocals of the odd numbers from one to two n minus one. And that is our solution, which I think is quite cool. We can, there's no nice way of simplifying this sum. We can approximate this using logarithms. So it's interesting, think, interesting to think about what happens when n is large. Um, but I think this, this solution is quite cool in itself. So this solution kind of introduces you to all these cool bits of math. So we firstly looked at the condition, uh, the law of conditional expectation, which you may or may not have seen before. And then in doing so and doing those computations, we end up with this nice recurrence relation, which we solve in a really elegant way. I love uh, telescoping sums. It's, uh, there's something really satisfying about a bunch of terms cancelling out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. It's a really interesting problem. And it's nice to see that things that, you know, an interview problem is kind of like what you would do at university. They want to show you um, a topic or an area in maths, which maybe you're not super familiar with. Maybe you haven't encountered before. And they want to see how you deal with it. Because at the end of the day, that's kind of what's happening when you go to study at Oxford or Cambridge. You'll go to your lectures. You'll learn about these really interesting areas of maths, which maybe would seem bizarre or you've never even heard of before. And then you're expected to go away, to, you know, do your own revision, own research, um, and obviously answer a bunch of problems on your problem set uh, based on the content. Anyway, I'm going to stop waffling. If you do have Oxford or Cambridge interviews around the corner, best of luck. I know lots of my students do as well, and I'm wishing them the best of luck as well. Um, do let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. But thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.